Hi everyone, welcome to the Satellite of Love. Say you're just in time to see old Crow here log on to the Information Superhighway. I want you to tell us about your system there, Crow. Oh, you know, it's just a basic multimedia package, nothing special. A 90 megahertz Pentium with 32 megs of RAM and a quadruple speed NEC CD-ROM. Sound Blaster 16 multi-CD sound card through that in, and a Courier V3428K baud modem. You know. Anything that'll make you happy, huh? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Accessing my slip server, entering my IP address, okay, crow at biteme.com, <laughs> and enter. <laughs> huh, server timed out, try again. Oh, I can it? read, thank you. Must have typed the wrong parameters. Here. But soon you will be merging on to the information. Uh, that's right, Mike, I'll be pulling out into the information superhighway, and the uh, traffic will, uh, huh. Oh. Wow, it looks like it locked up, huh? Yeah, looking for UART at FX1050. What does that mean? I don't know. I must have configured my COM ports incorrectly. Of well, course. You know, I'll just assign my modem to a different COM port and get back into my slip server, and <laughs> <laughs> there we... Whoa! Locked up uh, tight. Hmm. Looking for UART at FX105. I can read! Don't you think I can read? Gee, sorry. <laughs> All right, okay, I'll try this. Let me on the information superhighway, you stupid little... No, still Enter. looking for you, Art, at FX 105 oh, over there. Let me on the information superhighway! Honey. I want on the information we'll, superhighway! We'll be right back. We'll be Careful with that. There's no return. We'll have to shoot. The mouse under his tongue. Oh. 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 Calm down. Calm down. Twenty-four hour technical service. Take you twenty-four hours just to pick up the stupid phone. Jeez. All right, let's try a couple of things here. Come on, come on, pick up. One, two, three, pick up. <laughs> pick up. I know you're there. <laughs> Put down the donut, put down the coffee, and pick up the phone. Pick it up and help me. Help me, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to be a very old. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for calling technical support. Oh, hi. Uh, nice to talk to a real person. Now, listen, I got a problem getting on the end. It will be answered in the order it was received. No, 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 no. Please, God, don't hang up. Please, 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 please. I want out the information superhighway. You don't understand. <laughs> Yo ho, boobies. Looky what we got. We got cranial ports. You know, the future belongs to those. <laughs> Hold on there, partner, because we got sauce. 
barbecue sauce. <laughs> yes, sir. It's Cowboy Mike's own original red hot ricochet <laughs> barbecue sauce. <laughs> barbecue sauce? But look what we've got. But Clay, do you think it might be bold? Bold? Well, hell yes, it's bold. It's Cowboy Mike's own original red hot ricochet <laughs> barbecue sauce. It's <laughs> mighty bold. How bold is it? It's bold enough to bold dog your taste buds and hog tie your tongue. That's how bold this stuff is, you little priss and I mean it's bold. Bold. Oh, come on, thank you awesome. What do you think, Clay? Can we try some? Oh, I don't know. They say it's bold. I'll tell you what, you hairdressing little cowpokes. You check the umbilifort, and you'll find yourself a free sample of Cowboy Mike's own original Red Hot Ricochet <laughs> Barbecue Sauce. It's bold! Hmm, it looks somewhat bold. Speaking of which, saucy ones, <laughs> your movie today is called Starfighters, a bold Air Force epic. How about it, Clay? Is it bold? It's actually, it's not that bold. It's not? No. It's not bold? Decidedly unbold. Hey, what's the deal with this stuff not being bold? Now available a new extra bold! Well, this is really bold. So bold it's not recommended for human consumption. There is no known antidote for new extra bold. Cowboy Mike's so own original red hot Rico shit! <laughs> Leave it on a jet plane. Uh, don't know when I'll be back again. Over. Uh, coming out of Los Angeles, uh, picking up a couple of keys. And don't come back. There's already too much flying in this movie. Boy, your hair is busy. Look, they're taking off to become the Little Dipper. Cassiopeia. I think the East German long jumpers are cheating again. Well, let's connect the dots. The Sean Penn story. <laughs> Jet. Mm -hmm. Hate that song. Robert Dornan, the congressman. <laughs> what? Couldn't they get Rush Limbaugh? See, see how we can keep him in the air, flying. Lovely, lovely. Beautiful. Dare I say fantastic. Today on the American Sportsman, Clint Eastwood really goes after the elk in the Mackenzie Rain. Oh, this is the weirdest My Little Margie episode I have ever seen. And featuring Billy DeWolf. Oh, it's so grand. Hey, oh. Been through the desert on a car with no name. <laughs> Bob Dornan, wild at heart. <laughs> oh, I hate it when the little planes bother the big planes like that. Poor big dumb plane. Can't tell you how happy that makes me. Yeah, to see that Charleston was really big back in the 60s. <gasps> 23 skidoo! <laughs> Sergio Mendez in Airplane 66. I'm full, thank you. Oh. Mm, yeah, I'm going over to this other plane. They got chocolate gas. <laughs> Haunting. Come on, who's next? I can handle you. This plane is insatiable. It's the Babe Ruth of airplanes. Just lie back and think of England's airspace. Oh, sweet mystery of life, at last I found you. Nice basket. Ah, <laughs> uh, you want stamps with that? Oh, just the gas and the menthols, thanks. 
running and fueling with me. Sounds so like the Mike Curb congregation. I'm sorry, that's never happened to me. We can just snuggle for a while, that's okay. My, you're looking chipper. Someone get refueled this weekend? <laughs> that was a nice clean job, Cordite 3. All right, Cordite 4, you'll hook up now and take on 4,000 pounds. All set? Gas was so cheap, 4,000 pounds was like a dollar back then. Be simpler just to pull up to a pump in the ground, but... Cordite 4, Cordite lead. I said, are you ready? I'm drying my hair. This is Cordite 4. Affirmative. All ready, sir. Mrs. Robinson, are you trying to seduce me? Ewing from downtown! I have the feeling you're not ready for this. Your first time? No, it's not. I've refueled a lot of times. Jeez, they should have Donna Summer singing for this scene. I love to fuel you, baby. I love to fuel you, baby. From lead, what's the matter? This isn't your first time up here. Let's go. Shut up. I'm doing it, okay? Mm, I think he has whiskey jet. <laughs> Oops, Fort I2, not your fault. Could happen to anyone over. <laughs> Fort I4, settle down. Just hook up and maintain your proper position. Oh, that's so constructive. That helps a lot. So this is like a coming of age story. Now, Cordite 4, hold it there. All the other planes are giggling at him. <laughs> Shut up. What's that, baby? Oh, Cordite 4, that's French. 2AK refuel, baby. It's glorious. See, nice and easy, no sweat. Oh, yes, it's more wonderful than I ever could have imagined. And as the seasons change, the refueling continues. Cordite 4, this is Cordite lead. How goes it? Are your tanks full yet? Oh, yes. Oh, man. Cordite lead, Cordite 4, I've topped off. All right, Cordite 4, disconnect. He was really awkward because he yelled out Cordite 4, but he was with Cordite 5. No, oh, no, no, stay, please. I'll cook breakfast, over. Cordite Cordite 4, promise you'll call. I believe in refueling, I do. Yes, welcome to minute six of the glorious refueling sequence. When they can fly over mountains, too. Yeah. Uh, Cordite for, why did we pick Cordite? Uh, George Star from Cordite, Maine. 30 miles out, request landing information, over. Just right, landing information, Pueblo, Colorado. Roger, Cordite lead, George Tower, landing runway 16, altimeter 29 or 9 or 2, winds variable 5 knots, report on initial over. Why I tittle out. The refueling jet likes me. He thinks I'm cute. Me too. Ooh. So now it's time to remember the time in September. Welcome to Air Attica. Put your lips, your legs, your hips in a locked position. Prince. Sure, you buy a jet, but then you have to put in a long driveway. Gee, too bad this is all the jet footage we're going to see. You know, I'd rather listen to Bob Dorn and speak. <laughs> You're going to get it. Colonel Hunt sent where he wants to see you, sir. Now? Mm -hmm. Well, he said as soon as you got down. Okay. It's about your face. It's too lumpy. I'll take your elephant mask, sir. Thank me for flying me airline. Please check around my own seating area for any garments I may have stowed there. Now, here comes our own Terry with a lovely flight suit by Christian Dio. Ah. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hey, come on over here. I want to talk to you. Come here. Yeah, that's right. Come here. Here comes a Norwell. Isn't it nice how you can deep plane while listening to the world's most beautiful music? You uh, done with the uh, ladder? I could use it. I uh, got your helmet here. I'll. Uh, no, no, no. What's the matter, Bradley? You trying to give me a bad time up there? I'd like to explain about that, Major Stevens, sir. Explain nothing. 
Yeah. Took you two minutes to hook up, and that's two minutes too long. Should have been none minutes. What's going to happen to you when we get up there at night and go through the same kind of mission? Then I'll take two minutes again. You better get out your needle and thread and start practicing in your spare time. Okay, that's constructive. Hey, hey. Brad, the base exchange just got in some of those newfangled sewing kits. Chin. Want us to chip in and uh, get you one? Hey, Fred. Yeah, Bob. General wants you to report to the base headquarters immediately. <laughs> Not well, an actor. Region, 104 pilots. He wants to be escorted and shown our whole operation. Beautiful. Well, I've got another flight scheduled in half an hour, and I need the time. Yeah, but I heard you're the linguist in this outfit. Mm. Oh, yeah. Last week it was the West Germans, and a month ago the Japanese. Now, with all these NATO countries buying up these 104s, well, they, they all want to see how the experts do it. Major Stevens is here, sir. Have him come in. Jeez, he broke the face barrier. Mm -hmm. ah! Good morning, Colonel Hunt. Oh, it's you. Good morning, I know Bob. I get used to you. Have a seat. I'll be right with you. Is your face odd, misshapen? Join the Air Force. Bob, you're going to lose three of your officers. I'm going to kill them. Sending Holtzhauer, Riggs, and Bradley over to the 580. How are they doing? Well, no sweat on Holtzhauer and Riggs, but Bradley's still having a little trouble with the refueling. <laughs> well, they'll shape him up in a hurry. The 580th is deploying to Spain at the end of the month. These three will fill their quota. Are you listening? I don't look so happy, my friend, because you're getting three troops who've seen Lockheed's 104 only in pictures. Mm. But they'll be willing and able. Transfer says they're coming in today. Send them some baskets or something. I'm used to it. Not quite. Ah, <laughs> humor in uniform. Coming in are First Lieutenants William York, Eugene Lyons, and John W. Witkowski. Bunny? Junior. Junior? Mm-hmm. Son of Congressman John W. Witkowski. Senior. And also the Colonel Witkowski, who flew the B-24s of Pulesti, Schweinfurt, Regensburg, and about every other place those Mack trucks dropped their thousand pounders on. Wasn't he the one that retired at 20 years and right after that got himself elected to the House of Representatives? That's right. Oh, mama. And the same Witkowski who's been appealing to virtually every appropriations committee concerned with expenditures, mm -hmm. making sure that the Air Force doesn't lose out on any of his planned projects. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yet I feel hollow. But his old man wants his son into the heavy stuff. He wants him to fly the B-52s or 58s. Doesn't think he should be wasting his time in these piddling fighters. Uh, speaking of piddling, sir, if I could... Uh, the young lieutenant yeah. where every station. You mean he wants him out? Well, he wants him out of the tactical air command and into sack. In the sack? He wants the boy to push the big stuff around like Daddy used to do 20 years ago. Heck, he should know mm -hmm. those 104s aren't toys at a million and a half no dollars idea. a piece. Well, they can do a lot more damage than those 24s that Wotowski so kindly remembers. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's thinking about the times he had to hit those deep targets without any fighter support. Or Grand he's right with the fighters about something. Well, maybe he should be briefed again on how our attack fighters did it alone at Lebanon and Taiwan, and more recently, Berlin. Well, at least the young Lebanon? lieutenant knows what he wants. He hasn't let anybody know he's the son of a VIP or ask for any preferential treatment. So you treat him like one of the boys. Okay, everyone set with the premise of the movie? Uh, uh, Some sort of plane thing or something? Oh, oh, well. Pets, welcome. Free cable TV. Fuck on the Reds. The Air Force is in the dog and suds. <laughs> it's cocktail hour here at the Air Force. <laughs> oh, George, we were supposed to go to Larry Air Force Base. Yeah, take that paper. That's right, make it swing, Junior. You know, Junior tried to be a singer, but he couldn't cut it. Sit down, Junior. <laughs> What? I had no idea the Air Force was an Orrin Thompson development. Oh, the problem is there's a lot of jet noise. Mm. It's a heavily guarded suburb. Mm. Ooh, the Malibu Barbie car. <laughs> Kidnapped by Carol Channing. Uh, yes, the Air Force is that way. There, just keep going over there. You'll see it. Boy, everything was just sunny and perfect back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Dave, why don't you get out of the wig and into your uniform? Honey, just wait in the car till my tour of duty is done. Ooh. I love his sweaty butt. Our job, spray talc on that man's butt. Gentlemen, the plane you're going to be working with for the next few months... What? ...by a pilot's uh, dream. Ever since the days of Rick Toffin and Rickenbacker, hmm? the pilots who fly to fight who have always who? yearned for the advantages of altitude and speed. You will experience a concept of lightness never before felt 
You must well, die. Truly an ultrasonic fighter. Now this is the Starfighter. Get in. Lockheed's F-104 Air Superiority Fighter. Excuse me. Put it out, put it out. the team of the Tactical Air Command's Composite Air Strike Force. From Mattel. It's even been called a missile with a man in it. Ooh. Now, I know you intrepid pilots are anxious to get the feel of the bird, or else you wouldn't be here. Touch my bird. Go ahead. Now, I'm assigning the three of you to Major Stevens, 578 Tech Squadron. Spiegel, Chicago, Major Illinois, 60609. The 38s in World War II and the 86s in Korea. And the V-8s in the one after 909. You can bet your sweet life he's sold on the Starfighter. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you there quickly. We spent billions so the Air Force could mess around. Hmm? Hmm. Some bird, huh? Where? Uh, oh. Look out for the leading edge of that wing, Lieutenant Lyons. It's sharp. Don't run with that wing. No, I mean it. Go ahead and try and slice something on it. <laughs> See, we can make a really See, sharp wing. Like a knife. That wing is so thin you wonder how we can get up enough lift to keep hmm? this bird flying. By the way, where did you men come from? Russia. How about you, Lieutenant Witkowski? Well, sir, Lieutenant York and I were at Nellis together. We picked up a couple of hundred hours flying the 100s there. Well, the 100 is a good airplane. It's still the backbone of the Tactical Air Command. I'm not dissing the 100. You, Lieutenant Lyon? I flew the 86s over at Luke. And before that, I was a T-Bird instructor. Hmm? Good. Uh, any of you married? Please, no. No, yes, please. My wife's with me here. And two bachelors, sir, I I wasn't finished about my wife. Well, a couple of good-looking troops like you shouldn't have trouble finding dates in a hurry. You just furnish us with a couple of leads, Major. Right now, I'm here to furnish you with information about this airplane. Uh, but you brought it up. I've already read the flight manual, so come around the other side and take a look at this. Hold hands. Find your partner. Come on. Yeah, there's plenty of girls around here. Well, that's great, because I'm really... Shut up! I get... That's it. Everybody stroke the needle. There you go. This plane was recently sexed. It's a boy. <laughs> Bet you never saw this version of the rotating Gatling gun before. Especially pushing out 20 millimeter shells, 6,000 of them a minute. 100 rounds per second, gentlemen. Wow. You're not here to admire this plane. This is the probe that's used for air refueling. Go ahead, we'll lick it. Taste of that a few weeks from now. When do we get our first checkout ride, Major? Want to get settled in the married officer's quarters with your wife, Lieutenant Lyons? Yes, sir, I certainly <laughs> do. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant Witowski. I'll schedule you to go up with me in the two-place job. We'll also get an instructor mm -hmm. for nice. Lieutenant York. Go on back to the squadron room, you'll be briefed. Mm -hmm. Yippee, I'm a pilot. I know how to fly now. Lieutenant Lyons, you get yourself settled, check in at the officer's club. You'll fly first thing in the morning. Gee, I sure appreciate that, Major. You know, it's a little tough on the wife. I mean, checking on a new base and all of that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, the wife is going to be awful glad to see the me. We're going to have the sex. <laughs> Sergeant, those two Ds will be taking off at 1430. Get your men on them right away. You do it. Yes, sir. And sharpen those planes. This helmet belonged to a German who checked out on the bird and went home as an instructor pilot. Why don't you wear it for this ride until we can get one of your own? There are little bits of skull and hair in there. Just wipe that out. Hey, Siegfried, you fly this plane. Nazi bastard. All right, you've read the TOs. You've been briefed on local procedures. Hmm? After takeoff, we'll head north. I've had right enough here. of this face. Look at the snow for a while. Then we'll climb to 32,000 feet. And explode. Learn a little about this job. How do you start it? Now, since both of you have had sufficient time in the F-100s, you're going to find that this bird is lighter, flakier, more sensitive, and a heck of a lot faster. Hmm. But we'll hand you the stick up there after a bit. And we'll fly the so plane. Let's crank up now and go have a little serious fun. At Lincoln Center. It's, sir, it says, do not step on top wrong. How do I get in? Oh, wait. wait. Uh, just move that baby seat and those bottles and those nursing bottles. You know, in a real movie, they'd have red buttons doing the ladders. Uh, did you sign your release, sir? The Air Force bears no responsibility for the safety of its pilots. It... Promise you'll write, sir. <laughs> Upsy, um, Daisy. Really glad we brought this ladder. It was like it was made for this. Well, the pilot light works. George Star, Cordite 1, taxi and takeoff information to 104 as VFR. Uh, Reagan fired us, Cordite gotta go. One, George, taxi runway 16, altimeter 29 or 9 or 8, hold short of the active board. Cordite 1, Roger. Cordite Niner, Kiner, Biner, Miner. <laughs> Niner, Wurzel, Steiner, Frankenheimer, John Biner. Thank you for holding. Your call is important to us. Calls are being answered in the order in which they were received.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got better things to do with my time, Mr. Tech Support. Ha! Ah, Cordy Crow, Cordy Crow, ready for refueling over? Uh, Corny Crow, quit fooling around and get yourself in position. This isn't the first time you've been up here. Roger. Oh. <laughs> uh, we are on and locked. Prepare to take on 5,000 pounds over. Roger. Hi, this is Brian. Can I have your name and serial number, please? Uh, 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 Crow, your guy's on the line there. <laughs> this is Brian. Name and serial number, please. Hello? Hello? Huh. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Brian! Oh, hey, you can help me. I'm having trouble getting on the information superhighway, and you can get... Oops. Hi, Tony. Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Can I come along? Am I bugging you? I bug some people, huh? I'm going to fly everywhere you go, okay? Yes, the world's most beautiful music pipes directly into your cockpits. The George Tower, Cordite lead to 104, straight in approach. Cordite lead, George Tower, runway 16. Oh, he's suddenly become mellifluous. <laughs> Wheels. What doesn't this movie have? Uh, you'll turn right at the Dairy Queen when you get here. I think maybe one plane landing at a time, please. Huh? Some sexy land. <laughs> hey, move over a little. Scooch. Scooch over. The exotic sounds of Len down the Mississippi. The year is 1952. A very young Stan gets at the mic. The Jackie Gleason Show! We bring you into the hangar in a relaxed kind of way. I tell the tower the music's a little loud. The military has so much money, they actually have Nelson Riddle in the tower. Please be careful of the intake. I've had to go potty since Toma. Could do better, fail to yield. F minus. James Carville. Mm -hmm. I see you've been up in the newcomers. What do they think of the starfighters? Well, I don't know about York, but Wotowski seems to have been born in one. Ooh. Oh, yeah? The way his old man feels about it? Why? What happened? Well, after half an hour of some familiarization flying, I gave him the feel of it. He made me ashamed of the thousand hours I've logged on this bird. <laughs> What's the beef, Bob? <laughs> well, none, Colonel, but frankly, I never saw a neophyte handle an airplane the way Wotowski did. What's a neophyte, Bob? Sure, he was a little sloppy on the controls at the start, but after he got used to the characteristics, he threw the book at it, doing his best to annihilate space. You mean he was showing off? Well, not at all. No, Wotowski's the start of a darn good fighter pilot. Why don't you marry him? He was obviously trained right. But more than that, there's something bringing this drive out of you. Of course. The congressman? Well, maybe. Do you know flying a plane is like making love? Uh, you have to Once pay? Once had a little experience, every operator thinks he's an expert. The marshmallow sky. Tell me more about love. There's a stupid ladder guy. Hey, there's airplanes around here. Up, up, and away. Hmm. Well, hello there. Well, hello there yourself. She's a jingling. Picture of contentment while we hesitated about interrupting. <laughs> Not at all. Say, fellas, this is my wife, Betty. Betty, this is John Witkowski and Bill York. We call him Pinky Dink and oh, Pork Boy. Come on, have a seat. You guys aren't going anywhere. Sure. Will. You don't mind if we continue well, to make love? Some friends of club. Gene told me he was starting out with a couple of bachelors. Oh, footloose and fancy free. And we're on the prowl. Oh. Well, we can't really say. We, we really haven't started to look. What are you doing tonight? Huh. Hey, you really are on the prowl. You stay out of this. Yes, stay out of this. Uh, honey. Now, which one of you two nice young men is looking for a date? Me. Right here. Well, not to change the subject, but just how did it go out there today, uh -huh. huh? Gene, you'll never believe it. Uh -oh. I don't know how to explain it. You'll never believe it. That bird really wants to go. I don't you know, believe it. More than Colonel Finn said it was. You know... I actually thought that it was going to get away from under us while we were taking off. Yeah, great. Can we order? I've never experienced anything like it before. 
never before. Remember when we were making the change from recips to Hebrews? Yeah. Believe me, this change is even more terrific. Uh, you mean you're really sold on it, huh? Oh, no. I signed the contract today. <laughs> it's a regular Sam Levinson. Did you hear what he said? You mean about the wonderful flight you had today? Everything he says and an awful lot more, too. Gene leaps off on his first ride in the morning. Oh, yeah, I can hardly wait. Say, say, look, why don't you guys join us for dinner tonight? Come on. Oh, negative, but thanks. I had a snack a little while earlier. Right now, all I want to do is make friends with the bartender. <laughs> Drink till I wet Gene, myself. I think I'll pass on that, too. You get me a date, and I'll take you up on that dinner offer. Okay? We'll see. Nice meeting you, Betty. Great, great scene. <laughs> you know, John, I never really realized what a tiger you are. Shh, was that? not here. Why, I'm just as sociable as the next guy. Mm. Oh, I mean about on that flight today. Well, you were really racking it around. What do you mean? Stevens gave me the controls and told me not to break the airplane, that's all. Yeah, I know. Well, don't You're pout. You're really on me, old buddy. Well, this is not the first time either of us have been in a jet. No. First time in one of these babies for me. Boy, oh, what a vodka. Mm. Oh, they're all pretty much alike. This was just a little easier, that's all. Easier? Huh. Boy, this just wants to get away from you, that's all. Just drink. Come on, let's get off the flying kick, huh? We're going to be on it every day for the next six months. Day and night. Hey, I live for this stuff, don't you? Sure, Bill. Flying's my first love right now. After you drinking. if I weren't a throttle jock, why, maybe drink. I'd be on a Navy underwater demolition team or some other wild outfit. Drink. And that'd be my first love. Not decoupage? You mean to say you didn't want in this man's Air Force? When I was in college, my dad Drink. wanted me to get into the ROTC. Oh, boy. Liquor. My school just happened to have an Air Force ROTC unit. Booze. Then when I graduated, he wanted me to get into the actual flying end of it. So I'm here, and that's great. Jim. But I wasn't one of these kids that used to hang around airports just to be near pilots and planes and hangar okay. talk. Okay, and okay. Fires, I really love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But I don't see why we have to breathe it day and night. Jeez, I start a friendly conversation, and he takes the floor. Okay, sport. Here to some really good flying. I'll drink to that. Seventeen and a half scotches later. Not at the pool to realize they had an aptitude for flying. Of course, I'm a socialist and next time. Have I told you that over? Playing tennis, flying, all with your new hair. Cordite 4, join the formation. We like you. The dentist will see you shortly. Uh, anyone seen Francis Gary? Where'd he get off to? That nut. You know, we can make fun of these guys, but Saddam Hussein ain't laughing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, shall we? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. The afterburn. You're as light as air. Oh, that's lovely. Where did you learn that step? Thank you. Oh, I am tired. Thank you. <sighs> Here, the Air Force escorts Sununu to a golf game. <laughs> Yes, we've traded quality education of a million kids for these planes. Ah, lovely. lovely. Very nice. Ooh, Colonel Dulab. Well, gentlemen, now that you've soloed in Starfighter, you're entitled to this patch. Oh, great, a I'm patch. I'm sure you'll discover that the next training phase is more exciting and much more demanding. Eventually, we'll be depending on you to perform a variety of flying jobs. For instance, that pilot right there, he's going up for another high-altitude sidewinder firing test. Nope, just going to clean out my plane. <laughs> Colonel Hunt, sir, they've been looking for you. Telephone call from Washington. And I've been looking for you, O'Brien. What's happening? The general has just been informed that five technicians from the Belgian Air Force will be on the base sometime this evening. And you are to escort them during their stay here. What? I'm set up for night flying this week. Mm -hmm. I know, but we'll just have to wait until after they've seen how we operate here. Well, I'll be good. Ah, temper, temper. Oh, nuts. Colonel Hunt speaking. Good morning, Colonel Hunt. You're a hard man to find. Sarah? Who's this? Well, it's a little difficult to introduce oneself over the phone. I sell panel. I'm John Witkowski, the father of one of the pilots who transferred to your command a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yes, our Lieutenant Witkowski. His face springs into action. I do know you by reputation, of course, Congressman. Pleasure to speak with you in person. But I believe your boy is up on a training mission right now. I'd have him talk to you. No, I, I merely wanted to introduce myself to you. Perhaps dinner. We may or... have a bit in common. See? My brother George. You and I were maybe. flying in the ETO together 20 years ago. Quite a lot of us pilots were in the ETO together at that time, sir. Maybe so. They were in BTO? Uh, I don't remember. Tell me, that. Colonel Hunt, uh, how's the lad doing? Well, he came in here with a couple of other officers, and he's going Leathery. through routine 104 operational procedures right now. Getting along all right, then, is he? I only met him once, Congressman. 
but he seems like a personal boy to me. What do you want? Have no trouble with his fellow men or the aircraft he's flying. Uh, I happen to be looking at the tack tally of accidents, Colonel Hunt, and uh, <sighs> I was frankly shocked at what I saw. Shocked. What do you mean, sir? Well, to my knowledge, it was considerably more than those sustained by the heavy bombers and SAC. Congressman. Okay, how much do you did want? Did you ever consider how many individual flights the Tactical Air Command puts in the air as compared to the Strategic Air Command? I am comparing it with an accident-free record, which is what it should be. Exactly The forehead right. has been clear-cut. In this day of advanced engineering, the equipment is virtually perfect. Here we go. We still have the human factor to contend with. That's why your boy is here. He's human. To be supervised in handling these planes so that they can perform in the manner that the Air Force specifies. I had that coming. How is John doing in his flying, Colonel Hunt? He's just started, and he has months of intensive training and all combat procedures ahead of him. That was a great scene. Coming! <laughs> it's the new Air Force Goofy Bomb from Whammo! Yeah, go ahead and laugh. They got a kitty in that bomb. Oh. <gasps> no. It landed on Pigpen! <laughs> That dig me, pretty much. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Lockhorn cooked dinner again. <laughs> I'm out on a bomb and run with my baby. Yeah, come on. Bounce one for me. Bounce one. Yeah. There we go. Sit down, Junior. We're going to bomb them back to the jazz age. Lieutenant Heave, it says. <laughs> Lift here. Yes, the desert environment is enhanced by bombing. Left alone, it is too placid. Kaboom, kaboom. Yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. Just sit right back and enjoy the Vietnam War weeknights after laughing. Yeah, if this was a war, we'd be winning easy. Okay, we're gonna shake things up a bit. Picking it up now, come on and move with us. Bobby! Yeah! Woo! Okay, ladies' choice now. Drop your payload to the sounds of Ferrati and Taisha. Welcome to the Rainbow Gathering. Peace is possible in our lifetime. God, I love my job. Who needs high school? It's a volatile mixture of hot munitions and cool jazz. And Bob came back the very next day. Now, boys, in all fairness, I should tell you, occasionally the North Vietnamese will fight back. Ah, Christo's latest installate. Oh, good. Well, forever attacked by white rectangles, we got it under control. See? Oh, my thermos of napalm! Oh, no, I'll get it later. Here, an apocalypse lights. Hey, guys, let's not blow up everything the first day, okay? We got the whole weekend! I think the U.S. should get out of this movie. <laughs> Hopi burial ground? Oh, well. I hope they blow up Blossom. <laughs> Archery is safe and if... Ah! You all want to climb in this bug? Excuse me? Hold it. I'm the only one that's going to. Yeah. Sorry I'm late, honey, but I made a date for one of you. Who wants it? What do you mean made a date? For when? For tomorrow night. I can tell you right now that it's got to be me without any argument from him. He goes on a 24-hour duty as assistant aerodrome officer, and he knows it. Yeah, my name has been on the list for three weeks now, and there's nothing I can really do about it. Hmm? And besides, you never really should send a boy to do a man's job. <laughs> she really would have me anyway. <laughs> Level with me, Betty. What's she like? Do you realize that I've been stationed here over a month now? And this is the first night that I've found out this lovely creature exists. Well, Mary didn't exist much before this past week. She just moved to the West Coast with her family. I met them all out in Apple Valley. So I must have looked lonesome. Shut up, Iris. Well, we're going to take care of that from here on in. Uh, is this your first time on an airbase? Mm -hmm. 
Never been around a bunch of pilots before? Well, there's tail hook and all. So, how about that? Someone will listen for a change. Well, I wish I could have listened a while back then. Perhaps I wouldn't be where I am today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary, where are you from? Anyway? Iowa. Oh, Iowa. so you're stupid. Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> Say, I've heard of that place before, Gene. Sorry. Don't we have a cross-country schedule to take us across there? Yeah, but we can bypass it if you like. I no did it again. Iowa. Yes, and I bet you're going to ask me if my family raised corn back there. Well, now that you mention it, I was going to do that very thing. Well, go ahead and ask me. Okay, I'm asking. Actually, we did and we didn't. Oh, huh? well, thanks a lot, you guys. You brought me a puzzle. Corn. No. Okay, I'll bite. <laughs> Dad had an experimental farm back there. And I suppose you were the one that held the tape measure every morning just to see how much the stalks grew overnight. Not quite, but for the last two years, I was what they call a corn detasseler. Wow. What? A corn detasseler. What in blazes is that? Well, that's a person who removes the pollen-bearing tassels from five rows of corn. Check, then please. Then a couple of rows and he tassels the next five rows and so forth. Go, well, go on. I'm flabbergasted. Me too. Well, the two rows you skip are the male rows. And when the tassels dry out, the pollen drifts over to the female cells of the five-row section and fertilizes the plants. That's how we develop our hybrid seed corn. Can you beat that? Yes. I always knew that sex was corny. But did you ever think that corn could be so sexy? <laughs> well, now. Have you accepted Jesus? I've been here at George for the past three years now, and every time I see a pretty new face, I have to find out who it belongs to. So, what's your name, soldier? <laughs> oh, hi, Betty. Hi, Fred. This is Mary Davidson. Mary, this is Fred O'Brien. He's one of the flight commanders in our squadron. Another pilot? Won't you join us? Oh, by all means, if only for a little while. Oh, thanks very much. I don't mind if I do. Where's that stupid Iowa chick? Did she get here? Well, where were we? You were about to ask where Mary came from. I came from Planet Claire. Now tell me, where did you come from, Mary? Iowa, if you must know. Hey, Iowa. Really? What you do back there? <laughs> she was a corn detasseler. What? Yes. A corn detasseler. Yes, a corn oh, detasseler. Corn. Well, that's a person who... Oh, no, hold it, hold it. Once a night is enough. Oh, no, no, I'd like to hear more about this. After all, I'm just a little old farm boy myself. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, no, really? You know, my dad still runs a small dairy farm right outside of Milwaukee. Name's Gein. So I got out in time. Frankenhooker! Oh, no. No, Dad always said there were three ways a man could bring about his physical destruction. They were by drinking, detasseling, by women, <laughs> by farm. Got well, caught in power takeoff. My poor father chose the least exciting of the three. Bear ho hurry for bear ho hurry for detail ho here I it hey hurry fast hell son front and center on the double nope at ease thank you Major Nelson we are now halfway through the movie Burn. and during this time you have been repeatedly exposed to copious amounts of top secret classified information Rubber. and so at this point in time we feel it is now necessary to debrief you get him get him no no get him 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 Yes, mission yes. accomplished. <laughs> Whoa! How would you get those off? Past my jumpsuit. Well, we have our little ways. <laughs> oh, we got moving on. Give me those back. Serpentine. I'll go this way with the pants. Excuse me, Captain O'Brien. You know, I think I have to thank you. This feels pretty good. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're here. Oh, well, you save my place, everybody. I'll be right back. Okay, Fred. Thanks for brightening our day. <laughs> Captain O'Brien. Hmm? What? What? The, is Take that the Fred. one guy? Oh, Which guy is this guy? That one other guy. Which this guy? On special I don't know, I but he was help. the one. Now, what's up, Bill? Well, look, out at base ops, <laughs> there are four Italian officers. You want one? And they're on one of these government-sponsored um. inspection tours. Well, they bypassed going into McClellan, and they stopped here instead. Um. I understand you're the best one to see in such cases. Face. What, me on a Saturday night? Look, I've got friends waiting for me inside. From Europe. Besides, Italian's one language I don't compreh. Fred, look, all of these guys mm. speak good English. You know that. Oh. They just need somebody to clear them through and to get them billeted. Oh, it hurts. I'm going to be tied up at the message center, so I can't do it. Mm. Bill, you shouldn't do this to me. Oh, look, I'm really sorry, but with your experience, I understand you're really the one to call in such cases. 
Okay, okay, I'll be right down and check them in. This movie's become abstract all of a sudden. I already have your wheels for you, Fred. They're right out front. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Hey! I want to kick this movie in the groin and snag on it and give it a power sit-up. <laughs> so, are these the communists? She'd make a nice, dependable wife. You don't have to go in yet, do you? Your house is all dark. Did your folks go to bed early? Either that or they aren't in yet themselves. Or I murdered them. Did you have fun tonight? Did you wang chung tonight? <laughs> Me too. First time I've been out on a date since I left Nellis. Nellis? Who's Nellis? Is she cute? Well, you nut. Nellis is the name of our Air Force base outside of Las Vegas. Oh. <laughs> they call a lot of things, but never cute. I bet there are plenty of girls there. Where, at the base? Can you get me no, some? Vegas, silly. Oh, well, of course. Vegas is a swing in town. Uh. This place must seem awfully quiet to you after that, then. No, I kind of like it here. Now, why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? While I was there, but it was really too expensive for me. I don't miss it. Oh, I bet you do, too. I've heard about Las Vegas and all those showgirls. Now, what would a fighter pilot know about showgirls? I can't imagine. It's a calamity. How do you spend your time around here? Well, I don't spend it. They've got it all planned out for me. You're a pilot. Don't you fly a lot? Well, sure. As much as I can get on the schedule. Okay. It's not as much as I'd like. When will you be going up next? First part of next week, Quick, I guess. The reels are changing. Kiss her. Oh, sure. Could you fly real low over our house and make your engine roar real loud? Oh, Mary, you've been seeing too many of those World War II flicks on the Late Late Show. Those days of buzzing are gone forever. Okay, screw buzzing. But I thought pilots always wanted to do that. Well, sure we do, but... Look, if I were to come over to this house, it's full bore. I'd break all those windows. I'd knock all your dishes off the shelves. All of these lovely neighbors around here would be in dialing yeah, the base well, commander. I was just, I'd end up um, drowning. I'd probably just, never fly again. It was again. kind of a joke. The only thing you need on any low-level <laughs> mission is only... Didn't really think you were going to do it. I was really making conversation. Only over Shut up, please. Unquote. Hey, I've got a pet peeve about talking about flying away from Me the flight. Me too. Especially when I really don't even feel like crunch. <laughs> You're right, Johnny. We shouldn't be talking. Crunch. I have to get up crunch, early in crackle, the morning. Crunch. After church, the folks want to spend the rest crunch. of the day at Lake Arrowhead. And then there's my virgin classes. I just want to say that I really enjoyed myself tonight. Well, then come on. You don't have to walk me to my door. I have a gun on you. I hope you'll ask me out next time. Oh, no. He augers in. I need our support. Give me our support. I'm going down. You'll never touch me. She's got an orthopedic body. Man, what a great split level. Oh, boy. Stay awake, ah! gentlemen. You've got an important one today, so shape up and listen good. You're going to be firing the Sidewinder missile from the 104. As you know, the Sidewinder is attracted to its target by the infrared heat given off by that target. Mm. It's meant to fly right up the tailpipe of an aircraft. Yes, I'm But weird. if there aren't any MiGs around, you're going to have a rocket with flares attached yes, mounted on the other wing. Well, these flares will be the heat attraction. You'll dispatch that rocket first. It when hurts. If it is an adequate distance mm. from your plane, you'll let go of the sidewind. Vogue. Then watch what happens. <laughs> I think it would go something like this. Mm. Examining this one at its date's house. <laughs> Sir, nothing happened. Am I going to get marked out? Oh. Okay. Long high one. Whoa, what are the odds of that happening? <laughs> Take a good look at it, fellas, while it's brand spanking new. <laughs> this target is called the Dart. We tore mm -hmm. it from another 104. In an hour, it had better be lying on the floor of Death Valley, so full of holes it wouldn't even have salvage value for matchsticks. Take a good, steamy look at it. Come on! Good afternoon, Colonel Hunt. You go right ahead, Major. Yes, sir. Now, I'll be on the tow plane today, so if any of you have any Mustn't cry. feelings about the way I've treated you the past few weeks, mm -hmm. here's your chance. It's you take it easy on that squadron commander. I need him. Well, you've all had your basic gunnery, so now you're going to get a surprise doing it with a Gatling gun and this Starfighter. Mm. With its six rotating barrels pushing out 20 millimeter oh. shells oh, at 100 per second, you're not going to hear anything but a loud buzz when it fires. Stevens there? Yes. <laughs> After the first few trial bursts, I want nothing but hits from then on. Understand? What would it do for your morale if I told you of all the times I've been up in these birds, I never have hit one of those things yet? Sir, nothing, Colonel, sir! I know all about your reputation for not being able to see the target. Now, maybe if we'd painted a swastika on it, you'd tear it loose from the plane in one burst. Wow. Colonel Hunt here had many kills and as many probables over France. Oh. It's a standing joke around here that he's not exactly proficient with 
Anything that does not shoot back. So he's Only dumb. the commander can get away with that. Doesn't Listen, I just got back well, from the Victorville Chamber of Commerce meeting where I gave him my anti-communist speech. <laughs> I'm still Again? fighting mad. I want you to fellas to get up there and do right by me and knock the devil out of that thing. You know, he's crusty, but extremely unlikable. Mostly crusty. Hey, they strapped the general onto that one. <laughs> oh, at least excuse yourself. Uh oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh huh. Great. Well, well, they've taken jarts to the next level. <laughs> hmm? Oh, the plane is pregnant. Little baby plane. <sighs> Jeez, up or down, you kids, up or down. Ah, yes. ah, the association are bad. Is, is are, are, are is, was. Whatever. Hey, Steve, your head looks like an egg from back here. This was their last project before the Ray Count of Singers broke up. This is high enough for me. Thank you very much. Oh, oh Pueblo Tapestry. Let's blow the hell out of it. This is still better than Iron Eagle. Cha cha cha. Court I lead, Court I two. Court I two, you're on here. What do you think of the Clinton administration? Go ahead, two. Lead, I've got troubles here. My number two hydraulic system is dropping rapidly. Hmm. All right, let's clear the range and I'll get on your wing. Pick up a heading for the base. Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, you can tell it's a dangerous situation by the music. Hmm. I'm telling you. Yes. Court I two, any change yet? Negative. Gain says there's nothing left. Okay, lower your airspeed to 220 knots and drop your gear. Ah, it's a spare. Good only for 10 miles at 50 miles per hour. Your gear looks okay. Are you indicating work? No, sir. I've got an unsafe gear indication of my number two hydraulic oh. system reads absolute zero. Now. What is right with you? Well, your manual emergency gear release. I don't want my tape deck won't work either. And go ahead and kiss your ass goodbye. George Tower, Court I'd lead. I'm incapable of law. Over. Lead. George Tower, over. George, Court I'd lead. Request emergency landing for 104. That's true. Chasing the base, oh. approximately 30 miles north. Request straight in approach. My wingman has a hydraulic utility failure. Landing gear down, but indicating unsafe. I'm declaring an emergency. When he's crying, too. Roger, Court I'd lead. We will clear the pattern for you to land on runway 16 straight in approach. Court I'd check. Mm. Emergency, emergency. F-104 hydraulic failure, landing from a straight-in approach, runway 16. All cheeks, we gotta save baby pants. <laughs> that sounds like the Russian national anthem. Yeah, they would. The turtle called Gabra is approaching the base. Whoa. The hippies got those when they were done with them. <laughs> a giant hippity hop is called into action. Attention all aircraft, vicinity George Air Force Base. We have an emergency landing. Keep clear of George traffic pattern. I repeat, we have an emergency. Maintain radio silence. All this because a girl wouldn't kiss him. Court I do any change yet? Negatively. Same indications here. John, you prepared to sweat that bird down? I think I can handle it, Major. I just hope this gear doesn't fall off when I touch down. Mm -hmm. We got a great big convoy trucking through the night. Oops, uh, sorry. It's just my seatbelt's in the door. <laughs> John, from here, all three wheels are down and appear to be locked tight. Raj. Hi, Dwayne. What's I'm happening, Ron? I'm here to stay with you. I want you to make a normal approach and landing. Emergency equipment is standing by. Come on, Captain. We're out of Colombian coffee. I know I'm supposed to feel something, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. The George Tower, Court I'd lead. We're five miles out on final. Court I'd lead from George Tower, Roger. Traffic is clear for you to land. I'm going on break. This guy gets wigged out of his floor mats are uneven. Did they ever consider that this wasn't riveting? Boy, the potential for something to happen is very high right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, this is a, about a lot more than flying. Yeah, yeah, it's about landing, oh, too. Mm -hmm. 
No, no, not on runway two. We just seal coated it. I bet he feels a little silly right now. Well, that's the moron's problem. He's got a parachute jammed in his plane. Oh, no wonder. Here come the three stooges. <laughs> Read some of the gauges wrong. It's different than the other plane. This movie just faced us. Ah, oh, one of the great anti climaxes, huh? Mm. Uh, one more push. We can see the head now. You're doing fine. John Glenn sings the great love songs. Attention, all aircraft, vicinity George Air Force Base. Emergency has terminated. George, open for normal traffic. That was a great scene. Hey, Stinky, you leave now. You're out of the band. Here we go. That guy's got a poster of Mark Spitz in his locker. Huh? Who doesn't? You're the ones who are making all of that fuss about out there. Hey, uh, you trying to grab the spotlight, boy? Huh? Mm -mm. A little hairy, but no sweat. Well, with all those wagons out there, somebody must have worked up a little sweat. Well, sorry I disappointed him. Did you oh, miss hey, him? I almost forgot. Somebody's been trying to get a hold of you all day, long distance. You're supposed to call um, Operator 12, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks, Gene. Hey, hey! Uh, do you have any influence back there? Huh? <laughs> 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 oh, nothing's wrong, Johnny. We haven't heard from you for a while, and we we're wondering if everything's all right out yeah, there. Uh... Oh, Dad, everything's okay. I just hate you. Hey, it's great to hear from you. How are you? Oh, feeling tops, Johnny. I miss Scott Thorson. But I was concerned about not hearing from you for so long. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. We've been so busy here lately. I guess I've been kind of lax in writing to you and Mom. Well, bye. How is she? Fine as usual. Do you know how she worries about you? This guy's Uncle B. All the time when I was <laughs> flying years ago, I couldn't convince her how safe it was. And now you're worried about me, huh, Dad? Okay, bye. Well, tell me, how's it going, Johnny? Any troubles? Oh, uh, nothing at all to speak of. We're going through the typical transition training that everybody does in these 104s. Yes, I imagine you are. Yes, I imagine so. The trouble is that... I've been reading a number of reports lately that come across my desk telling me of all sorts of accidents. Accidents? What kind? Put that on the line. The usual <laughs> kind. Engine flame out, things like that. Trist for the page. And then the fighters, the pilot always bails out. Not like in those big jobs where you <laughs> keep flying if you lose one engine. Oh, well, look, Dad, I know what you're driving at, and, and the whole thing is silly. There's been nothing like that happening here. And if it did, I'm sure I could hack any emergency where we go through these recommended steps all the time. I still wish you'd apply for a transfer into a bigger outfit, you know. Your father and I are like worried, a son. Sack outfits. Yeah. Uh, those B-58s will be coming into their own shortly. Well, Dad, it just isn't done that way. You don't go hopping around from place to place because you want to try out different methods. Dad. Well, you should know how they operate. I'm in a position to make it real easy for you to get into an operational B-52 wing right away, Johnny. Mm. I'm sorry, that doesn't interest me in the least. Well, for heaven's sake, boy, I'm interested. Come on, Dad. Look, I'm here to stay, and no one is going to change my mind. I got life in me, now, Big can we Daddy. Get off it now? Hi, John. I'm sorry I intruded. This guy's Maud Frick. I'm thinking of your future as any father's interested in his son's vocation. Dad, I sure appreciate your calling, but I just got down from a flight, and I've got to report to a debriefing session. You understand? My arms are killing me. Right, Dad. Okay, sure. And thanks a lot. For remasculating so me. Yes. So long, John. I want his family dead. Oh, that's me. My dad died in the war. Who was Hi, that? Girlfriend stand you up? Huh? Just hold oh, me. Oh. Hey, but you put the bee in my bonnet. Listen, if I can get hold of Mary, will you join us at the club tonight? Yeah. Sure, but why didn't you tell me I was going to be sitting here like a big bump on a log? You're not, Bill. I'm glad you could be with us. Just get the Thanks. dagger out of my Eddie head. Eddie and Jade will be here in a minute, then we'll have a ball. Oh, boy, then I'll be like a fifth wheel. But I'll bring to that. Okay. Innkeeper, In same all around. Come on, okay, you Fine. Hey, here they are. Hey, hi. Hey, hey, Bill, you want one on the telephone, out in the lobby. Well, who found me here? I don't know, but somebody's been looking for you all day. Hmm? Don't touch a thing. I'll be right back. Can I touch my glass? I was already touching my glass. Oh, good. I never get tired of this stunt. Mm -hmm. This is Lieutenant York. Uh, say, Bill, this is uh, Fred O'Brien. Oh, For a short night cross-country flight in an hour, uh, you and I are the only ones who need the time, so I thought I'd check with you and see if you could take it. Me? George Goober Lindsay. Listen, I'm here hey. with a little party, Fred. We're just about ready to sit down and eat. Well, I... I've got a date tonight, and I'd as soon put this off till next week. Why don't you have to go on it? Look, 
Look, I'll, I'll supply the dexedrine, no charge. Whoa, well, I'm glad you yeah. called to tell me that you're volunteering, Fred, because my time is all spoken for. Oh, my face. Hold it, hold it, Bill. Let's be democratic about this and flip as usual. But I've got people waiting for me inside. Mm. Oh, come on now. This is SOP. Sop. Sop? Are you going to match me? Raj, go ahead. I'll match you. Okay, Dwayne. This is so great. Pilots have so much <laughs> fun. <do. laughs> All right, there's mine. What do you got? Now, you tell me first. Oh, no. I was first last time, remember? I've got tails. What's yours? Well, uh, mine's heads. It's always heads. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, yeah, join sorry, the Air Force. Yeah. Better luck next time. Do I really look like George Goober Lindsay? Hey, what's the matter, Bill? You look like an astronaut who uh, wasn't selected to get into orbit. You teed off about something? Tails, I get the wrong end of everything. Hey! Boom. Ah, yes, that provided much needed comic relief from all the gripping drama. Hey, is that Rod Serling? Uh, no, no cigarettes. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't go to a double makeout party with my spouse. Oh. Boy, I bet this takes us to new heights of sensuality, huh? <laughs> How about a little swap? I'd like a shot at Steve back there. Whoa, he's got a scorched face policy. They are positively mashing. I'm getting used to this desert country. Shut up, I guess. I may even get to like it if Shut you up, stay here you. long enough. If you're not moving, are you? No, the folks like it too much. It's so peaceful out here. I don't think I've ever heard this silence. Hardly a sound. Is that you? Somebody spoke too soon. There go a couple of starfighters off on a night mission. My God, she's dead. You no, know, we're a good ten miles from the base. Boy, that sound sure travels out here at night. Wish you'd travel a little closer to me and snuggle up. Wasn't he Caucasian no, earlier? This reminds me about the time at Luke, when the commanding officer invited a few of his favorite pilots to his ranch cabin. M Mammy. Always a very quiet, secluded place, away from everything. With no parties, no nightlife, and no women. Did you boys enjoy yourselves? Who went? Oh, you. <laughs> Some of the hottest snuggling you'll ever see on the screen. You may come in now. <laughs> Oh, you are so the only girl around. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, you got some queen corn back here. Anybody up for travel, Yahtzee? He turned into V.S. Napol. I think our chaperones have fallen asleep. Don't tongue my hair. No, we haven't. But if you don't get us home real soon, we'll have to unroll our sleeping bag right here. And you wouldn't want us to do that now, would you? He meant that dirtifully. <laughs> okay, Grandma and Grandpa. It beats me why you old married folk like to hit that sack so early. Well, now he leaves himself wide open for a sexy rejoinder. The rink will be closing in five minutes. Santa Claus is coming to town. That was a great scene. This will be a combination cross-country and refueling mission. Now, you've all been on the KC-135 tankers before, so you know the procedure. Plenty of booze and dexies. You've each taken on 5,000 pounds. You'll disconnect and complete your cross-country. You'd think they wouldn't need name tags anymore. Start engines at uh, 1310. Take off at 1325. We'll climb out on course and tuck in as soon as possible. Hmm? We'll be on target at 1410. Now for my weekend barbecue forecast. <laughs> the weather over Death Valley is clear with some high, thin cirrus. There's a front moving in out of these lower desert areas uh. with some squalls and thunder bumpers. We should be able to avoid those on our return. They're doing hangman. The last man should get back to base by 1600 at the very latest. Any questions? Where do we buy our books? Fine, let's get out there and crank up. The Air Force recommends crank. Wow. Blue heavens, yellow jackets. Yeah. I think we're at the point where something's got to happen. They did the runway in Spanish tile. Good grouting. Well, you'd know grout. Hmm. Uh, taxiing over the beginning of Run For Your Life. They're gonna taxi into town and impress the chicks. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm guessing they're going to gratefully acknowledge the cooperation of the United States Air Force at the end of this movie. Lunch! Look out, me first. No, me Get first. Out of my way. I was up in the air before you were. Get out of here, you fam. Yeah, some people think it's just a civil war. We shouldn't get involved. <laughs> Crazy. You uh, ask for more refueling, and we're giving it to you. Awesome. Yes. I'm at a loss. Now, we've done promiscuity on Tom's. Check. Uh, cuddling in the afterglow. Check. Uh, multiple partner illusion. Mm, got it. Uh, premature ejaculation innuendo. Yep. Gas station jokes. In there. Impotence. Oh, yeah. Uh, one night stand stuff. It's all covered. Okay, let's just watch then. Oh, refueling is a beautiful natural thing. That's nothing to mock. Okay, you're right. Mm. Ha, he accidentally started siphoning from a northwest flight. <laughs> <laughs> ah, mother's milk. Remember the world before this film, before yes. refueling? Yes. There was sunshine and laughter. Bunnies and kittens. People seem to laugh more then. Yes. Well, if the Civil War comes down to refueling, we'll win. Thank God we're not blowing our money on welfare. <laughs> It would have been so much easier if you would have just brought a jerry can. At home, at the office, or in the plane, the light FL. And Audrey Meadows! You know, I read the screenplay. It's two pages. It makes you wonder about the scenes they didn't use. You know, the cutting room floor was remarkably clean. You and I refueled by moonlight. Fuel like sparkling champagne. I don't know where you end and I begin. No, man. No, you can't cut me off. Just 4,000 more pounds, then I'll quit. Oh, a junkie joke. It's so cold. <laughs> oh. Thanks a lot, Sarge. He's not ugly enough to be in the Air Force. Hmm. Wing ops to wing commander. You're supposed to bring home milk. Go ahead, ops. We have a severe weather warning, sir. That front turned northeast and picked up speed uh -huh. after it left Mexico. Uh -huh. It reported thunderstorms, high winds, extreme turbulence, and maximum cloud tops to 45,000 feet. There, you old. Are we clear? I don't know. <laughs> the base is, sir. But we had that flight of four birds on the refueling mission returning from the cross country. Little birdies. That front is moving so fast that it might cut them off from us before they have a chance to realize it. Who's out? Major Stevens. Lieutenants York, mm -hmm. Lyons, and Witkowski. Stevens. All from the 578. They know what to do, and they have sufficient fuel to find an alternate in case they get stuck. Keep me informed as they come in. This movie has severe contraindications. The George Tower, this is Cordite 1. Request yeah. landing information, over. Cordite 1, George Tower, land runway 16, winds 170 at 20 knots, gusty to 30. Call on downwind with gear. Member FBI. Cordite FDIC. 1, Roger. <laughs> right. Wing ops to wing commander. Go ahead, Ops. Major Stevens just called in for a landing. He's in the pattern now. Stevens already? He takes on fuel last. He's supposed to be the last one in. I'll be right out there. Oh, boy. I, I had to go potty. I'm sorry. What are you doing in so early without the rest <laughs> of your troop? Well, it's getting so sloppy out there, I cut my cross country short. Apparently no one else did. You're the only one back. Shut well, up. I wasn't going to set her down in some alternate when I knew I could get in here easily. Sure, but why didn't your flight do it? Colonel, we both know they can put into Nellis, March, Luke. Joshua, Edwards, judges. Half a dozen other places I gave them during briefing. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. I can find out what's going on a lot easier from here in case we get socked in. We won't. It'll stay clear here. Yeah. Come on into the office. Let's talk refueling. Even their phones are sunburned. Howard just received a report from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office. Huh? Who is this? What do you want? Control. Leave me alone! Location was the Greenwich Mountains east of Apple Valley. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Devo to the rescue! It's Budgie, the helicopter. And they're off to the rescue in a highly dangerous prototype. How do it work? They go round and round. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Ooh, you see? Uh, we're gonna go higher than this, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, Shirley Maldowney well, just went by. What that was. I'm gonna get the weather. Hi, it's me. 
Tower, this is Major Stevens in the wing commander's office. What buzzed us just now? That was the 104 with his gear down, Major. We didn't get any call from him, so I assume he has an electrical failure. He's turning on his final approach now. Turning on the fire. Oh, once again, the film takes us in a new direction. What's the aircraft's number? It's a tough to take mouse, it sir. Stand by one, sir. Huh? Is that what? real? Is that... Yeah. Sir, that was Niner 26 that just touched. Yeah. Okay. Launch today, tomato soup, tater tot. The squadron ops in Wing Commander's office. Who was up in 926? Hmm? 926? Do we have to leave now? I'll yeah. check, sir. I'm just getting so into it. miss it. Sir? Come on. 926 was taken up by Lieutenant Yorks. Welcome, my friends. We are very fortunate to have with us today the United Servo Academy Men's Chorus, directed by uh, United Servo Academy Men's Choral Director, Vice Brigadier Sir Thomas Bullhead Servo, conducting them in the United Servo Academy Men's Chorus uh, uh, hymn. All right, eyes front. Three and... Here's to the guys and gals who like to fly. Flying so high with some guy in the sky. Sky rockets in flight. Afternoon delight, Captain High at your service. Wouldn't you like to fly in my beautiful? Alone. Take these broken wings and learn to fly me to the moon. Sail on a silver bird. Have you ever heard that the bird is the world? In a big country, dreams stay. In my merry Oldsmobile We are kids for saving Earth We are fans of Colin Firth Off we go to yonder blue We really move our tails for you Cross the water Ah, ah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. That was the United Servo Academy Men's Chorus. Uh, and that sonorous tone that you heard, of course, has to be due in large part to the fantastic conductor. What are you doing? What are you doing? Please stop that music, please. Please do not, do not continue with this, Vice Brigadier Sir Thomas Bullhead. I implore you, stop the music. Stop, I say, stop the music. Uh, Sylvester, can we get an engineer in here, please? In Studio A, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I want you out of my studio. Stop this music right now. Out, out, Rose. Weather well, says it's clearing up east of us. <clears throat> Storm was fast and vicious, but not too thick. Those choppers should get in there then. It's a smooth, smooth ride thanks to the counter rotating props. <laughs> Something's following us. Ega. Watch out for snakes. Are they on a manhunt for Juan Valdez or something? And still following us! No, keep us informed if they call in at all. And how about checking with some of those alternates to see if they radioed in there? Okay. And tell Lieutenant York I want to see him at Colonel Hunt's office immediately. Okay. He has a cab forward skull. Still no word from rescue. <laughs> hmm? Colonel Hunt's office. Yes. Oh, I'd love to see you again, too. Well, well okay. yes, just a moment. It's Mom and she's mad. Here's one for the books. Hmm? Congressman Witkowski is on the line. What? How could he know? Hmm? Tell him I'm in a conference with a general. Or... Oh, I better take it. It's a hell of a way to run a railroad. God, my face is big. Colonel Hunt here. Hello, Colonel Hunt. Ah. This is John Witkowski. We haven't talked together for a few months now, so 
I was calling to get some information from you. What's your hat size? It's been nice to hear from you again. But I... Sorry, it seemed like best, Colonel, but... Yeah. You remember how when we were in, we didn't always write home as much as we should have. Look, you ran a bakery. My boy John is guilty of doing the same thing, so I thought... Congressman, I'm still in the service, and I agree, I don't write home too much anymore either. Well, I was only wondering how the boy was doing there, and training, and all that. Well, sir, as far as I know, your boy is doing as well as could be expected, but right now I must be brief and hang up. We're having an important exercise here at the base, and I need all the lines for communication purposes. Wing ops. Growing patrol. Go ahead, Ops. The helicopter pilots found the plane. It's a 104, sir. Ah. They came across it in a pretty rugged area Ooh, and found yeah. that the pilot had ejected. They're looking for the chute now. What was the number of the down plane? Uh, four. I don't know, sir. They didn't give it to us. We'll contact them and get the number, quick. Sorry to be blunt, Congressman, but I have to cut this conversation short so to keep all of our lines clear. I'll see to it that your son calls you. My, that was blunt. <laughs> I'm in. Found him. He was under a pile of blankets in my room. So what happened to you? Both of my generators went out, sir, and I couldn't get them back on the line. I mean, with that front moving in on you, what did you do? Well, actually, it wasn't too bad where I was, sir. I flew around the easterly end of it and came up from behind. Do you realize Lyons and Witkowski haven't checked in yet? Yes, sir. And I don't care. Although I did hear someone on the radio say that they were going to try to land at Nellis instead of making it back here. I didn't recognize the voice or the call sign, though. Wing ops to wing commander. Yeah, ops. Have you any news for us? Rescue says that was 929 that crashed. Okay. <laughs> Rampant phone call Major action. Here. Major, uh, flight service just now called to say that one of our birds landed up at Nellis a half an hour ago. Sit out that approaching front. His chin must hurt. Yes, sir, they've got it so bad up there right now, he's staying on the ground. Pilots, John Witkowski. Witkowski safe with Nellis? O'Brien, look at the scheduling board. Did Lyons take up 929? 929. Ooh, Steve got donuts. Uh, yes, sir, that's Lieutenant Lyons. Oh, he's rather abrupt. Lieutenant Lyons is out there. Roar, I'm king of the desert. <laughs> Listen, he must be the chosen one. It's called the North Star System. Capricorn One. I'll signal them with my deodorant. Stuff really attracts helicopters. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, look, it's a Fridays. Are the other armed services as easy listening as the Air Force? We have a visual ID on numb nuts. <laughs> ah, it's a lush cocktail rescue. Oh, it's pretty rough, man. I had to eat a lizard and drink my urine. But you were only here for 10 minutes. I know, but... Congratulations, you're the recipient of today's lucky rescue. I did things I'm not proud of. Now back to the club for a smooth Canadian. Found one. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's got counter-rotating blades. I don't want to ride in this. That is, Lieutenant Loser. <laughs> Later in large group econ. All right, you 104 drivers, settle down and listen to something important. Jerry Van Dyke has something right. to say. Thank you, Major. Well, that was some to do we had around here yesterday, so I'll get right to the point. I'm Scatman Crothers. Two of you did the right thing. One of you goofed up royalty. Jacques. So, we lost one badly needed aircraft. Now, when you're in that high fastie, and you get your head up where it doesn't belong, you're going to find out you're going to end up with a short end of the stick. Dickweed, stand up and However, take a the bow. the investigation board will submit its findings in a day or so, so we'll let it drop until then. Then we'll kill you. But I have some information that you've been waiting to hear. Mary Lou Henner is replacing Mr. Vicky. And your entire fighter squadron, the 578, deploy for Europe. Hey! The Class! Shut up! Okay, okay, knock it off. Thank you. You don't have to act as though you didn't know it was coming. Oh, uh, little raw. Uh. Of course, we have a lot of polishing up to do for the ORI, and a lot of good old-fashioned paperwork to complete. You're not funny. 
Since we'll be flying our own starfighters over the water, you're going to have to check out your rescue equipment. Check out this. Now, a very important piece of that rescue equipment is what we call a... Sergeant, would you step up here for a moment, please? And here's Randy in the latest gear. Sergeant here is dressed in what is known as a poopy suit. Poopy suit? Don't suits. ask me why they call it that. <laughs> But you'll be wearing one of these on your way across. You. So next Saturday, you're going to get a chance to check them and make sure there aren't any. Take it off. Okay, you jocks. Let's find out why you didn't join the Navy. Last one ends a goony bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do they get the ducky, sir? All right, man. Poopy suit. Poopy suit. Poopy suit. Poopy suit. You poop it in your pants and you do a crazy pants. It's a doopy suit. Colonel Hunt, telephone, sir. You mean they traced me here? You can take it on the inside extension. Okay, where is it? Ah, it's poopy suit day. Colonel, speaking. You're a hard man to locate, Colonel oh, Hunt. Geez. This is John Witzkowski. Ah. Mm -hmm. Right, sir. And how are you again, Congressman? I'm fine here. Over there, not so good. I just now received information through my committee that you had an unfortunate loss of another plane out there. Mm -hmm. And that my son was involved in the same flight. Mr. Witkowski, we did not lose another plane. We misplaced it. I was the only one this past year. Oh, wait, except for those Besides, six. your son was the wisest one on the flight since he chose to land rather than fight his way through. Well, just the same, Colonel. When we were flying together, you know as well as I do that drastic action was taken on such an occasion. Yeah. But we didn't have the Sir, poopy I suit. I do not recall that we ever did fly together. Ooh. Furthermore, the proper and prescribed action was taken in the case immediately. And Colonel Hunt, will you please inform me as to why you are so stubborn and will not consider a transfer for my son? Uh, Congressman, I, I wanted to tell you about that. As a matter of fact, we are affecting a transfer for your boy. Wow. Wonderful, wonderful. It's wonderful, Imagine. wonderful. When did all this happen? Only a couple of weeks ago. As a matter of fact, they're, uh, they're giving him a, a sort of a going away party right now. His face is being eaten I'm away. I'm sure he can <laughs> give you the good news by himself since you're on the line. Uh, you, you hold on, I'll get him for you. Yes, sure. Yeah. I was in a holy ring. They kept pushing me under. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Johnny, how goes it? Well, just, just great, Dad. Bye. Did the CO tell you the news? Yes, yes, he told me you were being transferred, but he didn't yeah. brief me in on it. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. Which big outfit are you getting into? Yeah. No, none, Dad. Our entire squadron is being transferred to Europe to replace the squadron that's returning. Go. But I'll give you and Mom all the details of the letter, okay? I promise. Dad. <laughs> He's vapor locked. Ooh. Hey, Dad. Dad, I just really need your love and support right now. And Dad. Well. I... And you mean he didn't say anything? Oh, Wasn't he even angry or something? Is he picking well, what could he say? There's nothing he could do about it. Oh, well, down deep inside, Dad knows I made the right decision. I think you have too, Johnny. Flying fighters is important to you, and you wouldn't be happy doing anything else. But I sure hate to see you go. Will you miss me? Right. No, I will. How often will you write? Is every day often enough? Well, just about, but no less. Want to play refueling? How long will you be gone, Johnny? <sighs> Four months. Well, she'll be showing I by then. That seems like a long time, doesn't it? I'm beginning to miss you already. But I'm not gone, so... Mm -hmm. Honey, I, I was wondering if... If you heard how the twins are doing. Well, if I could ask you to wait for me. Right here, under Johnny, this tree. I was hoping you'd ask me that. I'll wait with your best friend, Steve. Mm -hmm. Honey, I really love you. I love the crunch of your hair. I love you too, Johnny. Zip! <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh. Yeah. All right. King Friday has arrived. I'm such an expressive puppet. <laughs> Really good. <laughs> I must say, I've fallen up with all my recruits. I'll just circle back and hit on his girlfriend. Oh, ow. Ouch. Oh, it's a poopy hat. Ah. 
I'm sure it's all right. Don Meredith? <laughs> so beautiful. George Tower, court ID, taxi and takeoff information for 18104, IFR. Court ID, Lee, George Tower, taxi runway 16, altimeter 29094, hold short of the active. Member FDIC. Court ID, Lee, Raj. And no taking the ladders. Makes my dewlap proud. But he needs his training wheels. And to think that at the beginning of this film, all these characters were strangers to us. Now they're like family. Do we get frequent flyer miles for watching this? Ooh. Flying away in our poopy suits. Pushing our crayon in the rayon. So how much penance does this movie count for? A years? Hmm. We're going to need some of that weird Europe money when we get there. Don't crap in your hand, crap in your poopy suit. You'll feel relief filling your brief. Fill your pants over France in your poopy suit. Flying high in the blue, free to do number two. Poop, poop, we do. Poop, poop, we do. I, I think that's probably enough. <laughs> No, that's quite uh, enough. Splash, thank you, thank splash. you. Splash. Stop it. So this must be the highway to the danger zone. You know, it's all kind of dull until you remember how sharp those wings are. Receiving a Bachelor of Arts Arts degree. <laughs> I've got a lump in my throat. I've got a lump in my poopy suit. And now cut that out. <laughs> Just drop it. Hey. <laughs> I'll eliminate it from my repertoire. <laughs> Let it lie. George Tower, Cordite lead, ready to roll. Cordite lead, George Tower, winds are calm, clear for takeoff. Just leave, please. Scat. Zoo! Can we stop in New York for lunch and then some shopping? We can't stop in New York for lunch. Goodbye, Pier One. Hmm. So, it seems like they're leaving. Yep, that'd be the indication I would get from the <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, yep. Happened. You know, when we get to Europe, I'm heading straight to Rula Lenska over. I'm going to get a London Hard Rock Cafe t-shirt. So they're, they're leaving. Right? Yeah, yeah, leaving. And to think that right now they're all making their own gravy. <laughs> Bro, that's it. What? Hmm. Captain, is Europe a big country over? Uh, Captain, I don't speak Europe. It's hard to see them going when you care so much about them. Crow, <laughs> sir, about Europe. Are we attacking or just going? I think this is for the best. Their faces had really worn out their welcome here. So it would be implied that they're leaving. I think this is an implication they're leaving. that you get here. Thank you. I hope they remembered to arrange where they were going to meet in Europe. Ah. Right now, they're probably refueling in their hearts. Mm. Yep. I really think there's more nothing in this movie than in any movie we've seen. Ah. Mm. But it does appear that they're leaving. Yep. Yeah, they're leaving. So basically, according to themselves, the Air Force is a bunch of leather-faced, not-so-bright, heavy-drinking, dull-witted speed freaks who poop in their pants and can't make it with women, right? Uh, Am I right? Yes, I'm not that is say correct. That, but you could say Well, I've reformatted my hard drive, reloaded all my software, I've reconfigured my COM ports, and I've even checked my dip switches. <laughs> Function five. And I'm in! Wow! Oh, ooh, oh sweet information superhighway. What gem bring you me from the far reaches of cyberspace? It says, <laughs> hi, this is Frodo. You want to play four-person boogers? Oh. Boogers? Sure. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, you play your boogers. We've got a letter to read oh here. Uh, put the uh, letter up on Still Store there, Cambot. Uh, this is from um, 
Oh, it's from Gail, Laura, and Clark. And Hi, they Gail, say, Laura, dear Tom. Mike, Crow, and Tom, last Black Christmas King. we got this used plastic tree, so we spray painted it fuchsia and cobalt blue, silver and white. Then after Whoops. it was decorated quite tastefully, I might add, we were stupefied to realize that we were without ah, a star, angel, whatever, defense. for the top of the tree. Whoa, Luckily, I realized that Tom, Tom's base would make for a wonderful tree topper. So show that picture that there. Happening. Wow, and that'd be a weird feeling. Look, you got those large, fleshy hands there. That kind of disturbs those, me, but it's a little otherwise spooky. makes a nice uh, thing. So thanks, uh, Gail, Thank Laura, and Clark. And, yeah. uh, uh, looks like Crow's all set here on the information superhighway. Oh, you jump my booger! Oh. Oh, Great, Frodo logged off. Now I gotta go hawk up a new booger partner. Well, hold, hold on. Hey, Forrester, what about you want to be Crow's boogers partner? <laughs> oh, no time for boogers. Frank and I have established direct access to each other's brains. Right now, he's kindly sharing with me some of his own thoughts. Oh, Frank. Oh, well, thank you very much. I didn't think anyone could think that. Oh, think that one again. There you go. Come on now. Come on, take that a bit further. Yes, good. Excellent, Frank. Yes. Think it hard. Think it. Yes, good. Yes, Frank. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, fun's fun. Right now, I'm going to think, Frank, to push the button. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, push it!